Well, howdy, neighbor. I come to you today with a little bit of a problem. Here in the lab, I kill a lot of people. You think all that flesh I used for basing was fake? Nah, man. 100% organic people. Always fresh, never frozen. Unfortunately, that leaves a bit of a mess around here. So today, I'm designing myself a little helper. Their job? To make cleaning up after myself a little easier process all these corpses and recycle them into fresh material to further supply new flesh craft experiments. This is going to be another scratch build, mainly using aluminum foil and a new type of clay I've never used before. This is also a bit of an experiment on texturing smooth surfaces and some gore effects. So go grab a snack or a drink or something and kick back and relax. Let's get to it. To start things off, I'm going to start with the legs. These are just some paper clips from the dollar store and I fold them out and use the pliers to get the, uh, the small bits that kind of hurt my hand. Next up, I grab some aluminum foil and using the straightened paper clip that I just made, I use it to measure out the width of the foil that I need. And after cutting the strip, I cut that strip in half. So I start rolling up the aluminum foil, making sure to put that straightened paper clip into the middle of it. That way, whenever it's all tightened up and rolled, it has some flexibility and sturdiness to it. And here I'm twisting the foil. Not only does it make it a little more sturdy, but it also ensures that it doesn't unroll, which could be a problem. After the first one, I made seven more. Pretty easy. Using this dreadnought base scribbled onto a sticky note as a reference, I began to sculpt the main body of the spider out of balls of aluminum foil. While forming the three balls, I take care to reference the base quite often as to make sure everything is within the size limit I've set for myself. After that, I join all three pieces together with some more paper clip and a few little holes drilled into each piece. All of the paper clips were adhered with super glue. About here is the point of the project where I remember what fucking animal I was trying to make. I had made an ant body when in actuality I needed a spider. Spiders only have two sections. I use a bit of foil to combine parts one and two into part one. Here that covering was a little bit loose, so I just used some super glue to keep everything all nice and tight. Right here I'm trimming off the ends of the legs to reveal part of the paperclip inner core. I'll use these bare paper clip sections to attach to the main body with some super glue. Here I'm just using a permanent marker to get everything mapped out and ready for drilling. After making sure all of my marks are exactly where I want them, I go through and start attaching the legs. After all the super glue is dried and everything's in position, I take a permanent marker and draw a line across all four legs. This will give me a nice point of reference when bending the legs into position. And to bend them, I use my trusty needle nose pliers. Side note, but these pliers aren't actually very old. I don't know how the hell they're covered in rust. I used them to fix the toilet like maybe once or twice and I keep them inside. I don't know, I need to get the rust off these things.
After I get the first bend done, I make another line across all four legs and proceed to bend them in the opposite direction to give our eight-legged friend the ability to stand on his own. I also take this opportunity to bend the legs in a way to pose the spider. Since this spider has a human mouth on the other side, I wanted the viewer to be able to see it from the front, so I put two legs up like he's sort of in a defensive stance. Next I realize I forgot to do the pedipalps, so I drill two holes for that and assemble two smaller legs like I did earlier. Now since this is a spider that goes around cleaning up, you know, dead bodies, I figured having one hand to hold his work would be nice, and the other hand is going to be a small mallet that I... He doesn't own it, he's just borrowing it, you know? Thankfully I have a bunch of hands left over from my last project, Mr. Dexter, and the hammer is just a spare mallet I've got from some old Stormcast Eternals. I think I used them for a Grey Knight conversion. Yeah, actually, yeah, that sounds right. But I'm not going to use these mallets, so I figured he can go ahead and use one. Next, from that same Stormcast sprue, I cut off a straight bit of it and sharpen it into a bit of a spike. I like to imagine that he uses the spike on the end of his leg to, uh, I don't know, hold anything that's trying to get away so he can uh, process them. <laughs> that's a little grim, but eh. Taking a quick second to change the blade in my X-Acto, if you're new to the hobby, it's important to keep these blades changed so your cuts are all nice. And for you guys that have been in the hobby, change your fucking blades. I, I, know, I know they're old, and I know they're dull already. Stop using the damn thing. Change the blade. Don't be a cheap bastard. These things are like $4 for a pack at Walmart or Michaels. Just change the damn blade. Now here's a material I haven't personally worked with, it's called sculpting. It's essentially an oven baked clay. And my plan was to use this over the foil armature that I've made for the spider in order to give it a sense of rigidity. Because at the moment, you could probably just push this thing over and it would bend and crack in like a million different places. What I'm doing here is just using some Sculpey on various parts of the spider, but not covering that foil texture over entirely, because I kind of like it. But what I'm doing is essentially trying to get maybe about a 90 or maybe an 80% coverage. For any hard to reach areas, I use my mystery clay shaping tool. I still want to know where I got this damn thing. And the spider now mostly covered. Now when I was assembling it I forgot that I'm gonna be putting this in the oven and now I've got two pieces of plastic attached to it. The spike and the hammer. Obviously if I leave those on then they're gonna melt. So I take this quick chance to uh, surgically remove them so to speak. After that, it's into the oven. The instructions say 15 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, and when it comes out, it's uh, fairly sturdy. Kind of rock hard if I flick it. I'm impressed, honestly. Now, when covering it with Sculpey, I hadn't covered the back... Um... Google says abdomen. We'll go with that. Yeah, I didn't cover the abdomen just because that's what I was holding onto at the time, but now that the rest of the sculpture has been baked and won't be affected by my fingers, I, uh, I now take this chance to cover the abdomen. Time to start on that purdy mouth. I use some rolled up foil in small little sections to make the base of the lip attached with super glue and after that cures I take some more Sculpey and sculpt over it. For those unaware the advantages of using a foil armature as opposed to just making things completely out of Sculpey 
or clay is the fact that Sculpey slash clay can get fairly expensive and aluminum foil is fairly cheap, fairly damn easy to manipulate and it's usually laying around your house anyways. Not only that, but aluminum foil can hold its shape like vertically or horizontally as opposed to something made of solid Sculpey, which depending on the weight distribution of the piece you're making may sag or hang in some areas. Using a foil armature is just pretty much the way to go here. Next I take a piece of foil and start roughing out the exact length and width of the tongue that I'm going to be sculpting. After getting something that's suitably wide and thick enough, I proceed to cover it in Sculpey. The idea that I'm going for here is that my spider will wander around an area and when he finds biological matter of any kind, he'll use the hammer and whatever tools that are nearby that he has to essentially process everything up into one big mush. Afterwards, he'll use his long prehensile tongue to eat any of the, for lack of a better word, corpse mixture. Once inside of the spider, the material is essentially recycled and is used when the spider lays eggs, which it keeps on its back. We'll be sculpting those later. So he's essentially recycling corpses and dead bodies into eggs, which will become either new spiders or something even weirder. I don't know. I didn't think that far ahead. Now the tongue is pretty rough, but from what I've heard you can use isopropyl alcohol on a brush to smooth it out. And from this application, it, it does work, it just I didn't quite think I needed to do it. I'm not sure. I figured it's not hurting anything, so I might as well do it. Next I use my mystery tool to start carving out a central uh, divot, trench, chasm, canyon thing in the middle of the tongue. Uh, what is it fucking called? I don't know. We'll take some Sculpey here and sculpt out some lips. Here I'm applying some PVA glue onto the spider and using super glue on top of it. Now I did this in my last video and it makes a sort of texturist putty that you can kind of poke around with a toothpick. I do this on random patches all over the spider. The Sculpey leaves a smooth surface and I didn't want to leave it smooth. I wanted to add some variation over the uh, spider. For further variation, we're going to base the spider, not put it on a base. We're going to put basing materials straight onto the spider, mainly this sand here. And what I'm hoping that we'll do is not only break up that smooth surface that I've made with the Sculpey, but from far away, one could possibly mistake it as a slight fuzz texture. Breaking out the small foam balls again. These will be attached to the top of the spider's abdomen. It carries the eggs on its back just to ensure that the eggs see through to, uh, I don't know, being born, not, be not being eggs, I guess. The eggs also get some of this basing sand in between them to kind of help bulk it up and give some texture in between the blank areas. Now that the eggs are done, I'll go ahead and base the rest of the abdomen. Now the sand is attached with PVA glue, but there's still a chance it could flake off when handled. So I'm applying some watered down PVA or watered down Maj Podge over the sand and whenever it dries, this thing's going to be rock hard. Like you'll have to try to remove some of the sand. Now before I go prime him, I wanted to put a skull in his hand to show the spider kind of mid-work, if you will. I'm using a skull from this box of Citadel skulls, and while most Citadel stuff could hardly be called cost-effective, a box full of 340-ish skulls for about $15, and they're all really nice sculpts, it's 
it's a really hard value to beat, honestly. I mean, besides like 3D printing your own or recasting, but yeah. <laughs> and now I take the spider outside and prime it gray. Another food intermission. This time it's a chicken salad sandwich. Pretty good. My friend's mother made this chicken salad, and while normally I'm not a big fan of chicken salad, she makes it really well, although there's a couple of raisins in here, and me and raisins just don't get along. Alright, sandwich defeated and primer's dry. First thing I'm going to do is give this whole thing a base coat in this light gray color I've got here. I considered using a white primer and then just putting the light gray over that to make it even faster, but sometimes I have a tendency to miss the inner cracks of miniatures, and whenever that happens, if it's a big white spot, it's really easy to point out and I feel like an idiot, but with a darker gray, I think I can kind of get away with it a little more here. Plus it, uh, it, it just looks like shadows, so, uh, you know, big brain move there. I also take this chance to paint the tongue in the light gray as well. It'll make applying the pink later on much easier. So I kind of got ahead of myself here. I went straight for a white dry brush, but as you can see, as soon as I start dry brushing, you notice, just like I do, that you can't see shit. That leaves me with two problems. One, you can't see the white, and two, there's no shadows or depth to this. And we can solve both those problems at once with a black wash. Now granted, it's not going to be a very heavy black wash, it's just regular old paint, nothing fancy, just not super heavy. When I initially made this wash, there was way too much black in it, and I put it on too dark for the mini. Loading my brush with a bunch of water and going back over it helped dilute the paint that was already on it, which left me time to further dilute my wash with some more water, and it worked pretty much how I wanted it, so I just went from there and washed it like normal, just a section at a time. Now I'm going to take this brown and start making these stripes on the spider's legs. I will say it's always quite nerve-wracking taking paint to a bare surface for some freehand. Maybe it's just me, but I'm not very confident in myself when it comes to this. Nevertheless, it's not something that's going to go away by its own. The only way to get rid of that kind of nervousness is to just go for it. And honestly, if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. Here I'm using the width of my brush to help space these uh, brown stripes down the legs. Same method with the body. When it comes to the thorax, I don't go over the egg sacs as they're supposed to be resting on top of the abdomen. Nevertheless, I do my best to make it look like a ring that goes all the way around. And if you notice, I, <laughs> I, I fucked it up a little bit, but hey, whatever. Here I mix up a bright pink using about two parts red, three parts white. Just gonna give the whole tongue uh, two thin coats. Next I take a tan that I've got laying around and mix a little bit of the pink into it to use for the lips. The tiny touch of pink adds a little bit of warmth to the skin. I also take this chance to put some of that pink on the eggs and after that dries I hit the top of them with that skin tone I made for the lips and it kind of gives the eggs a bit of a fleshy look to them, kind of gross honestly. Taking a quick second here to paint the inside of the mouth black because I forgot to do it earlier. Now here I'm using a warm brown shade, a Reichlin Flesh shade from Citadel, and hitting it with a bit of water and using that on the lips and the eggs on the back to give them a little bit of a warm depth. After this step I went outside and hit it with a coat of matte varnish spray and I wanted the tongue to be glossy, so whenever I came back in, I got some of this gloss varnish that I've got laying around, 
and watered it down a little bit. Uh, there's a proper ratio somewhere online, but I just said fuck it and threw a bunch of water into it. Probably not what you're supposed to do, but it worked out in the end. But I used that gloss varnish all over the tongue to make it all nice and slobbery and shiny. Alright, the secret to all the gore you saw earlier is E6000. It's this really slow drying super glue that gets really stringy. Second ingredient. <laughs> I barely get to use the damn thing, so today I'm gonna use the fuck out of some blood for the blood god. While I used a toothpick here initially for a small, accurate application, I used the toothpicks to also put some more of this goopy gore on the back. My main thing is that I didn't want the E6000 to get in the bristles of a brush and just completely ruin it. Now with regular old blood for the blood god, I can use a normal brush and just spatter it around at random. To be honest, this is kind of fun. I, I don't get to cover anything in blood very often. Um, this was very enjoyable to me. Um, I might have gone a little overboard at some points, but I had so much fun doing it that I, I don't really care. Plus, his job is to essentially scoop up corpses and eat them. He's not going to be the cleanest dude around. For the really big pieces of gore, I just used a lot of E6000 and decided to use a Q-tip to scoop it on instead. Those toothpicks aren't going to cut it and I'm not ruining my brushes. This E6000 Blood for the Blood God mixture honestly just makes a perfect little pile of like fleshy mash and I really like how it came out. Honestly this project was a lot of fun. I did hit the wall of wanting to be done with it, but that happens with every project. And here's the final spinning close-up shot of my Corpse Collection Spider. Honestly, with the zebra stripes and all the blood and the big old disturbing tongue, I am absolutely in love with this model. I would not trade it for a million dollars. Two million dollars, we'll talk, but a million, no. Nah. As for a name, I considered a few things, but the main things that really stuck out to me about this project is the fact that I had to put it back in the oven multiple times, and while I was going to go with some really unfitting name for him, uh, thinking about it, I realized it's covering a bunch of eggs, so in that case, this would be a female spider, and I didn't realize it until the very end. Um, but the name I think I'm going to settle with is Pumpkin. Something about Pumpkin is very fitting for this spider. And um, I love Pumpkin. And she, uh, she keeps the place nice and clean after I am done mutilating and dissecting bodies. And I thank her for her hard work and I pay her a fair wage. Looking back at the footage, this rotating shot seems to be a little overexposed somehow. And... I messed with the cameras and the lighting a lot, and I, I couldn't get it to work. I wish I had some way to make better close-ups for miniatures, but given the equipment and the space that I have, it's just a limitation that I'm just going to have to accept, at least until I can, you know, get more space to do this hobby. I hope it's not completely unwatchable for you guys, like, you can't even see the texture on the top of the mini, but I, I swear to god it's there. I, I, I swear. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully this inspires you to make your own minis or whatever. Um, if you guys do end up actually making something, please let me know, because I'd love to see anything that you guys come up with. Um, I've seen a lot of other big YouTubers right now sculpting their own minis, and while it's cool to watch them make their own minis, there's something cooler about just having your own. And while I've been doing this since before they were doing it, not not trying to, you know, do the whole I was their first cred, but it's still nice to see people in the miniature hobby branching out and making things that aren't just paint schemes or conversions. But yeah, I, I, I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, share the video if you like it, and I will see you guys next time.